deathless titans placed upon the face of the earth three generations of men, the first of them being men of gold. Becoming too close to gods themselves, Cronus ended their time on earth with an eternal sleep. A second generation came to be, the men of silver, unwilling to serve the titans and make sacrifices upon the holy altars, as all men shall do, they were condemned to dwell under the earth for all eternity. Finally, a third generation, the men of bronze, a brazen race, sprung from the ash tree, terrible and strong are they. Join me as I tell you the tales of the men of bronze. This is Dragon's Blood. Beware Brontes. Episode 19 Their bellies full of roast pig and wine, the party made their way through the throng of people to the roadhouse. Once inside the room, everyone was ready to wash off what seemed like a fortnight's worth of dirt and sweat. The serving lunch came in without knocking. Upon seeing the four men in various states of undress, she said, Well, aren't I the lucky one? Four handsome men in one room. Everyone laughed except Menkari. Blushing, he did his best to cover up in his undershirt. Don't be bashful, hun. Seen everything there is to see. She waved it off without a care. There be two wash tubs only. How about I take you two first? She pointed out Akam and Minkari. You two will be no problem to wash up. No time at all. But you two, now that's a different story. She walked over to Sunisret, sized him up and down, then felt his muscular torso. Lots of you to wash. Sunisret, his head in the rafters, looked down at her with a smile across his face. Walking over to Gamden, she looked into his eyes and continued, You will need all my attention. Lost in her gaze, Gamden couldn't say a word. She ran her fingers down his chest and abdomen. Breaking the spell, she walked over to Minkari and curtsied. My name is Idithi. Let's get you washed up. She held out her hand and Minkari took it without hesitation. Entranced by her as well, she led the way out of the room. Akim remained behind for a moment to say, Keep your heads about you boys. This beauty can entrance you with a single look. He snapped his fingers in Gamden's face, bringing him back to the moment. She will beguile you and leave you destitute, given the chance. How do you avoid being entranced by her? Asked Gamden as his eyes came back into focus. You two have had quite a bit of wine with supper, making her job even easier. He tapped his chest. I chose to remain sober. In a place like this, anything can happen. Keep my wits about me. Plus, the prayer tattooed across my right breast wards off such simple spells. Hopefully, she can't read the language of the ancients or my advantage will be lost. Akam looked around the room. I think it would be best if you were to leave your coin purse in my saddlebag until I get back. With that, he left the room at a trot to keep up the guise of being under her spell. Just as she promised, Minkari and Akam returned in no time at all. The dirt of the road and the sweat of their toils in the tubs behind them, they smelled like kings. Minkari rubbed the smooth skin of his face and said, Never before have I had a shave so close in my life. 
He stretched every muscle in his body, then continued. That bath was so relaxing. Sleep beckons me. Akam imitated Minkari and said through a yawn, Yes, so relaxing. I can't remember when I was pampered to such a degree. Noticing the purse was no longer around Gandam's neck, he had one last thing to worry about tonight. The water for your bath should be nice and hot by now. Idithi stood by the door as she spoke. Off you get. Time to get clean. With a single look from her, both Sunasret and Gamden obeyed her every word. As they passed by her, she gave them a slap on their right buttocks, hastening their pace down the hallway. No need to wait up for these two. She winked at Akam and closed the door behind her as she left the room. I sure hope nothing untoward happens to those boys. When he didn't get a response, he looked around for Mankari. Snoring softly in his bed, no answer was forthcoming. Sleep well, old man, said Akam as he traced the symbol of Athena above his bed, then held his hands up to the sky. Athena, hear my plea. Protect us all. He stood motionless for a moment in silent prayer, then said through a yawn to no one in particular, Ooh. Best find that coin purse of Gamden's, and have a sip of some of that healing potion of Kafu's. Looking through his saddlebags, he continued, That was a relaxing bath. Gonna need something to keep me awake. Little more than two hours later, Akam heard the latch on the door click open. He quickly laid down, pretending to be asleep, just like Minkari. With his eyelids open just enough to see what was happening in the room, he watched as they entered. First, Sunisret stumbled in, hitting his head on every ceiling beam until he collapsed down into his mattress. Instantly, he was asleep and snoring loudly. Then Gamden, followed closely by Idithi, guiding him to his bed. After she had him under the covers, she looked around the room to make sure everyone was sleeping. Bending over Gamden, she whispered, I'll be back later for you. Yes. Later. Snuffing out the lamps, she left them in darkness and silence. Akam got out of bed and felt his way across the room. Standing over Gamden, he slapped him hard, twice across the face, and shouted, Gamden! Gamden! Wake up! He only mumbled something incoherent and fell back into unconsciousness. Drugged, just as I thought. Akam stood in the darkness wondering what he should do next. He ran many a scenario through his mind, but only two of them seemed plausible. Waiting by the door to surprise her, or lay in bed and surprise her. Choosing to wait in bed, he felt his way back across the room. Taking another sip of the healing potion, he lay on top of the covers and began to recite his prayers unto Athena, silently in his head. Losing track of how long he waited or how many times he recited benedictions, his patience paid off. The lock on the door clicked open and the door creaked agape. Faint light from the hallway bathed Gamden in his bed. Idithi silently made her way to him, bent over and whispered, I am here for you. Yes, I am here for you. Let's make sure the priest doesn't interrupt. Before Akam could spring his trap, 
She looked at him and spoke a single word. None of his muscles would respond, and there was a smell of rotten flesh. Immediately, Ackham realized that she used a paralyzing word and searched his memory for a countermand. Wrapping Gamden in his blanket, she threw him over her shoulder with ease and ran out of the room. Seconds later, Ackham broke the paralyzing spell and jumped out of bed. Only enough time to put on his long sleeve shirt, boots, and then grabbed his sword. Into the dimly lit hallway he went, but could find no trace of them. The door to the back field crashed open and he saw their shadows disappear into the night. As fast as he could, Ackham ran out the door into the darkness after them. The moon was large and bright in the cloudless sky, casting confusing shadows everywhere he looked. Mustering all his tracking skills, he began the hunt and set off in pursuit. The trail into the woods narrowed to a mere footpath. Ackham stood there, losing all hope of picking up their trail again. Looking up into the night sky, he begged Athena for guidance, when a scent of rotten flesh filled his nostrils. Quickly and quietly, he followed the odor into the woods, where he came out into a glade. There he saw Idithi standing near a massive tree trunk, with Gamden lying still upon it wrapped in his blanket. The stench of putrid flesh grew stronger as he closed in on his prey. Idithi began to speak as she undressed, halting Ackham in his tracks. We are finally alone. I have been waiting for our time together so impatiently. Yes, so impatiently. Idithi's dress fell to the ground around her ankles, exposing her alabaster skin, perfect buttocks, and shapely breasts. She bent over him and inhaled, deeply savoring the scent of his young flesh, then kissed him passionately on the lips. Unwrapping the blanket from around his body, she took his penis in her hand and brought him to an erection. Gamden began to moan softly with pleasure as Idithi straddled him and guided him inside her. Ackham turned away and was ready to leave to let them have some privacy when he caught the scent of decaying flesh again, but even stronger than before. Turning back to face them, he was taken aback by what he saw. Idothi's pale skin was now black and covered in blisters and boils from head to toe. Her long black hair had fallen out, leaving a smooth scalp and large leathery ears. Akam burst out into the clearing and shouted, Get away from him, foul and pusa! She jumped down and faced Akam, letting out a scream that sent shivers down his spine. Her body was grotesque with wrinkled flesh, sagging breasts, and the left leg of an ass. Be gone, evil creature. I will not allow any harm to come to this young man. She screamed again then pointed a long, bony finger at him and said, Leave us, priest. I must pleasure myself. I must feast on his young flesh. His young, succulent flesh is what I crave. Yes. Her thin lips pulled her wretched face into a smile, revealing long, rotten black teeth. She began to drool while she said, 
Once I finish with this young one, I will feast on you next. Yes. Akim drew his sword and repeated, I will not allow any harm to come to this young man. Advancing, he raised his sword, ready to strike a death blow to the demon before him. The Ampusa lunged toward him, razor-sharp claws, ready to tear his skin from the bones. Seizing the opportunity to strike, Akim brought down his sword in a slicing cut across the arm of the Ampusa and severed her hand clean off at the wrist. She reeled backward in pain, screaming, grasping her arm as crimson jets of blood covered the ground before her. In the blink of an eye, the Ampusa shape-shifted into the form of a field mouse and disappeared into the undergrowth of the forest. The skirmish lasted mere seconds, but Akam was still full of adrenaline and was looking around wildly for his adversary. He stood still, took three long, deep breaths, and was in control of his wits again. Looking over at Gamden, he saw his breath in the cool night air and sighed in relief. Once again, the smell of decomposing flesh filled his nostrils. At his feet lay the severed hand of the Ampusa. Bending down to pick it up, he reeled back in disgust at the stench of the thing. Gathering his willpower, he bent down again and picked up the hand. Clammy and cold, it felt like the flesh had been rotting for centuries. Akam walked over to where Gamden still lay on the stump and laid the hand down beside him. Lifting Gamden over his shoulder, he grunted with the effort and said out loud, Damn him, Pusa is strong. Tossed him around like nothing. I got lucky tonight. Might have ripped my head clean off. Wrapping the severed hand in the blanket, the smell of it was still overpowering. The entire way back to the roadhouse, Gamden mumbled incoherently about Idacy. Still under her spell, even if she hadn't drugged him, Gamden would have done whatever she wanted him to. Taking one last look at the trail, he was satisfied that nothing had followed him from the glade. Inside the roadhouse, Akam headed straight for the room. Fumbling with the door, he realized that he forgot to take the key when he chased after Idathy. Every second, Gamden seemed to get heavier while draped over his shoulder. Akam said out loud, Enough of this. It's just a door. Taking two steps back, with all his might, Akam kicked in the door. Here you go, boy. Back into bed with you. Flopping Gamden down on his mattress, he started snoring along with Minkari and Sunisret. What drug did that demon use on them? He asked himself out loud while he scratched his head. Probably used it on everyone in the building so she could do as she pleased. He stretched every muscle in his body and yawned loudly. Akam laid down in his bed and pulled the covers up. The last words out of his mouth before he fell asleep was, Better get some rest before everyone wakes up and wants to get going. Look for episode 20 of Dragon's Blood, Beware Brontes, on YouTube.